The idea for today's Subscriber Saturday once again comes from Mars Gaming who suggested for Subscriber Saturday can you try to grade every single MLB team's offseason. Now the reason why I picked this comment is because it did have four likes. It shows that it's a video that a few of you guys do want to see and I thought it was a pretty good idea. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Again, if there are any videos you want to see in the future, make sure to comment them down below. Good chance that it's coming up. And I've seen player guy suggestions and they will be coming out closer to when the actual regular season starts. So just make sure to stay patient. And so you don't miss any of those videos make sure you subscribe and tell a friend because it would help me out I would appreciate it so if you guys like this video make sure I leave a like and comment down below what are some of your grades for all these MLB off seasons because some are pretty good some are pretty bad and I would say that generally speaking when it comes to sports you guys know me it's frank about it I feel like I'm a pretty tough grader I'm someone that cares about winning so I try to look at what the team's vision is how the team did and what their plan should have been and I kind of go based off what their expectations were so starting off we're going to go with the Texas Rangers and obviously the expectations for them were not too high this offseason. We think they were going to be a big player for all these big time free agents out there. So the recap of the Rangers offseason, they traded Lance Lynn for Dane Dunning. They acquired Nate Lau from the Tampa Bay Rays. They signed David Dahl. They traded away Rafael Montero. They traded away Elvis Andrews, got back Chris Davis, and they signed Mike fulton -Avish. Now I'm not going to go through every single signing that all these teams made. I just try to go with the ones that are kind of significant. And when you put all these moves together, it still doesn't make the Texas Rangers a winning team. I mean, none of these guys are amazing players. So I'm going to have to give it a D plus. Next team is the Seattle Mariners, who the team that acquired Rafael Montero from the Texas Ranger. They also added Paul Blow the Lead Seawall. So get ready for Paul Seawall to blow some leads for the Mariners. They added James Paxton and Ken Giles. Two guys are coming off of injuries. So there is some risk there, but there also is upside. And the Mariners, they don't have the highest expectation in the world. They're probably not ready to compete quite yet, depending on if they call up their big time prospects. They're still a young team that's exciting. So I'm going to give them a C minus. Up next, the LA Angels, a team that I had really high expectations for, you know, being that they have Mike Trout. They've been disappointing. They gave Anthony Rendon all that money. Obviously, they're still paying Albert Pujols a ton of money. There's very high expectations for this Angels team to finally get to the playoffs. So what do they do this offseason? Get Jose Iglesias. Get Rezel Iglesias. Get Kurt Suzuki, Jose Quintana, Alex Cobb, Dexter Fowler, Juan Lagares. Those are the ones I want to talk about. And for me, that's not enough. These guys are okay players like Jose Quintana is an okay player. You know, all, all these guys, they're just okay. They're not going to take you to the top. If you're a team that's losing and you're outside looking in trying to get to the playoffs, these players do not get you to the playoffs. That's not enough. The Angels are going to need more of that to really compete in the American League, especially with no expanded playoffs. So I have to give them a See. Up next, the Houston Astros. They added Ryan Stanek for the bullpen. They also re-signed Michael Brantley. They signed Steven Souza and Steve Ciszek to minor league contracts. They lost George Springer free agency. And as of right now, Fran Valdez hurt his finger already in spring training. And we know that Justin Verlander is hurt. So they do have some injuries in that rotation. What I will say is that I like the other young pitchers that the Astros have that stepped up in the playoffs for them last year. Christian Javier, Josh James, Jose Ucurde, even Blake Taylor, who they got from the Mets for Jake Mariz. This team was one game away from going to the World Series, which shows that the Astros are a good team, but the fact that you lost a huge part of your team in George Springer, and now you lose a really good starting pitcher, I would say that the Astros, as of right now, they get a D plus for me because they didn't really make their team better. Like, keeping Michael Brantley is important, but all these other moves, you're not that much better. You're not now going to win a playoff series and be in the World Series. The Springer loss is very significant. I think the Framber Valdez injury, if he's out for an extended period of time, that's going to hurt this team. And if they sign Jake go to Rizzi, that could bump their grade up to a C. But as currently constructed, they're getting a D plus from me. The Oakland A's, they had an interesting offseason. They traded for Elvis Andrews. They brought back Mike Fires. They brought back Jed Lowry, who now is probably going to be amazing for them once again. They added Yasmero Petit and Sergio Aroma for the bullpen. They also added Mitch Moreland and late in the offseason acquired Trevor Rosenthal. They lost Liam Hendricks and Marcus Simeon. They're both very important parts of their team. So as of right now, I have the Oakland A's grade at a C plus. Because while they did fill their holes those are significant players that they lost and didn't get the greatest players in the world to replace them. The Detroit Tigers they definitely had under the radar offseason they picked up Jose Urania, Robbie Grossman is another player the Oakland A's lost, S. Ramo Ramirez who finished the season very well for the New York Mets, Wilson Ramos who already is hitting well in spring training has lost weight, probably gonna have a good offensive year with the Tigers. They brought back Jonathan Scope and they added Nomar Mazar who had a down year with the White Sox. So for the Tigers given their expectations I give them a C because none of these guys are all-stars 
but it will improve their team. Up next, the Kansas City Royals. They signed Michael Taylor, signed Mike Miner, brought in Carlos Santana, brought back Greg Holland and Wade Davis, who they had a while ago when they won the World Series. They signed Hanser Alberto, made the trade for Andrew Benintendi, and then they signed Brad Brock. So I would say, given the Royals' expectations, all these moves that they made, some of them were pretty good. I, I love Carlos Santana. He's a great player. They already have a pretty good offense to begin with, so I'm going to give the Royals a B. Up next, the Cleveland Indians. They traded away Francisco Lindor and Carlos Carrasco to New York Mets. Got back Andres Jimenez and Ahmed Rosario along with Josh Wolf and Isaiah Green who probably won't play this year. The Indians also added Eddie Rosario. They brought in Billy Hamilton so that's a massive addition and then they lost Carlos Santana to the Royals so for them I give them a C- minus because the team is still okay but I don't really think the Indians got better in this offseason. Up next the Chicago White Sox. The notable moves that they made was bringing in Lance Lynn, signing Adam Mean, and signing Liam Hendricks. I think the Liam Hendricks one was huge for them. Lance Lynn also a very big acquisition because when you already have Dallas Keuchel and Lucas Giolito in your rotation anytime you can add a third horse and really have a strong rotation and you add someone like Liam Hendricks who was one of the difference makers why the Oakland Athletics beat the White Sox in the playoffs that takes your team to the next level is why I'm giving the Chicago White Sox an A. The Minnesota Twins they picked up the immortal Hansel Robles they also brought in Jay Happ, Andrelton Simmons, they re-signed Elsa Cruz and picked up Alex Colome on a very nice contract. I'm going to give the Twins a B-. minus. Now let's go to the AL East. The Baltimore Orioles. They traded away Jose Iglesias, replaced him with Freddy Galvez. They signed Matt Harvey and Felix Hernandez. Now, those signings would have been amazing five years ago, but now in 2021, those two signings are not going to get it done. And just the overall team, like the Orioles, they showed me a little bit last year. They showed me some exciting offense with multiple young players who they lost in this offseason. And I just think that the Orioles looked like they were finally kind of on the right track. And I feel like they've taken a step backwards. So I really did not like the Orioles offseason. And I'm going to give them a D. Up next, the Tampa Bay Rays. After going to the World Series, they re-signed their catcher, Mike Zanino, signed Michael Walker, traded away Blake Snell, but they got back Luis Patino and Francisco Mejia. They also traded Jose Alvarado, they got Chris Archer, they got Chaz Rowe, and they lost Charlie Morton in free agency. The Rays also signed Rich Hill, so I'm going to give the Tampa Bay Rays a B. And now, on the surface, when you look at these signings, you know, we saw Waka, we saw Chris Archer. They didn't have great years, but just knowing the track record of Tampa Bay, they have a way of just fixing guys and getting the most out of them. So I could see these signings working out and Tampa Bay still being a successful team. Up next, the Toronto Blue Jays. They were very active in this offseason, spent a lot of money, brought in Kirby Yates, Tyler Chadwood, re-signed Robbie Ray, signed George Springer, signed Marcus Simeon, made the trade for Steven Matt. So I'm going to give the Toronto Blue Jays an A-. And the reason why is because, yes, they didn't make a lot of moves, but their starting rotation still isn't amazing. Unless Nate Pearson steps up and becomes an ace, which is very possible, I don't love the entire Blue Jays rotation. At the top, it looks good, but as you get to the lower half of the Blue Jays rotation, it does not blow me away so that's why I'm gonna leave it at an A minus. Boston Red Sox they had a pretty interesting offseason starting it off with getting Hunter Renfro while making their trade with the rival Yankees for Adam Adovino they brought in versatility players like Kike Hernandez and Marvin Gonzalez they signed Garrett Richards for the starting rotation they traded away Andrew Benatendi the headline piece coming back is Franchi Cordero they signed Salamora who is a good overseas player they also signed Danny Santana but they did lose Jackie Bradley so the Boston Red Sox I mean, these guys like Kike and Marwin and Santana, they're versatility guys. They're not all-stars, but still, the Red Sox did improve their team, so I'm going to give them a B. Up next, the New York Yankees. They re-signed DJ LeMahieu to a six-year deal, but it is a very reasonable AAV. They signed Corey Kluber. They made a trade for Jamison Tyone. They signed Darren O'Day. They brought back Brett Gardner. And they signed Justin Wilson. Now, they did lose Masir Tanaka, James Paxson, and Jay Happ. So, the Yankees, I'm going to give them a B+. Plus only because these guys can be very good, but the injury history and the uncertainty of this rotation after Garrett Cole really concerns me. Will Kluber be healthy the entire season? Same goes for Tyone. How will Luis Severino look coming back from injury? How is Domingo Hermanga look coming back from suspension? There's a lot of question marks in that rotation. Will they trust David Garcia enough? Clark Schmidt is already hurt, so I'm giving the Yankees a B plus. Up next, the Arizona Diamondbacks. They had a disappointing year, and the notable moves they made this offseason was signing Joaquin Soria, Ashuba Cabrera, Tyler Clippard, and Anthony Swarzak. So I'm going to give the Diamondbacks a D plus because none of these guys are really needle movers. Like Soria Clippard, they're pretty good relievers. Ashuba Cabrera, nice versatility guy, good bat. It's not going to take the Diamondbacks to the next level and make them a winning team. So I'm going to give them a D plus. Up next, the Colorado Rockies. They trade away their star player in Nolan Arenado. They signed CJ Crone and Greg Bird to have a battle at first base. And those are the most notable moves they made. 
They have not decided what they're going to do with Trevor Story yet. And because of that, I'm giving the Rockies a F. Because the Rockies are not better than they were last year. They could have got a lot more of that Arenado trade. The fact that they didn't get any big-time prospects back from the Cardinals or meaningful players like a Dylan Carlson, and they gave $50 million to the St. Louis Cardinals, that was not a good trade for Colorado. I feel like they could have gotten more for him, so I'm going to give the Rockies an F. Up next, the San Francisco Giants. They start off the offseason by having Kevin Guzman accept the qualifying offer. They added Matt Whistler, Anthony DiScalfini, John Braviva, who's already hurt, uh, Kurt Casilli, Alex Wood, Tommy Lastella, Jake McGee, Aaron Sanchez. So they made a lot of signings, some pretty nice signings, and I'm going to give the Giants a B. Up next, the San Diego Padres. They made the trade to bring in Blake Snell. They signed Hai Sung Kim. They made the trade to bring in Yu Darvish. Made another trade to bring in Joe Mosgrove. They signed Mike Clevenger to a two-year deal because he's going to be hurt this year. Next year, he will be a Padre. They signed Jerkson Pro Far for the bench as a utility guy. Brought in Mark Melanson and Keela for the bullpen and capped it off with a massive contract extension for Fernando Tatis Jr. And because of all those moves, I give the Padres an A+. You can't ask for the Padres to do any more than they did in this offseason. They made themselves at least competitive with the Dodgers and are going to be an extremely exciting team to watch this season. And up next, the Los Angeles Dodgers, who brought in Corey Knable. They signed Tommy Canley to a two-year deal, similar like the Padres did with Clevenger with the injury. Brought back Blake Trinan, signed Trevor Bauer to a record contract. They also brought back Justin Turner. They did lose Kiki Hernandez and Pedro Baez. The Dodgers are better this year than they were last year, so the Dodgers, they get an A. Now the NL Central. The Pittsburgh Pirates traded away Josh Bell, traded away Mosgrove, and Tyone. They signed Chase Shreve and Todd Frazier, two former Mets. So I'm going to give the Pirates a D. And the reason why is because their team isn't better, but they brought in prospects, which is the way that they should be going. Try to get as many young players as you can and build sustainable success. So I'm going to give the Pirates a D. Up next, the Milwaukee Brewers. The notable moves to me were Colton Wong, Brett Anderson, and most recently, Jackie Bradley Jr. Milwaukee improved their defense. You will get some offense out of Wong and Bradley. Obviously, you're going to have Lorenzo Cain coming back this year after opting out of last season, so I'm going to give the Brewers a B. Up next, the Cincinnati Reds. They brought in Sean Doolittle, D. Gordon. They lost Bauer and do not have a shortstop. So as of right now, I'm giving the Cincinnati Reds a F. The Reds are not better this year than they were last year. They also lost Archie Bradley, so I'm giving the Reds an F. Up next, the Chicago Cubs signed Jonathan Holder. They obviously trade away you Darvish. They got back Zach Davies in that deal, but they also trade away Victor Carantini, who, as you know, hit two home runs in a game against Jacob deGrom in a big September matchup, which, of course, I was at. They lost Kyle Schwarber, so they signed Jock Pearson to replace him. They added Jake Arrieta for the rotation because they lost John Lester. They signed Brandon Workman, Cameron Maben, and Eric Sogar. These moves are all kind of middle of the pack. They have not quite decided what they're going to do with players like Chris Bryant, Javi Baez, and Wilson Contreras. My concern is that the Cubs are just going to let these guys walk and not get anything back for them, and that's why I'm giving the Cubs a C-. Up next, the St. Louis Cardinals. They made the big trade to acquire Nolan Arenado. They brought back Yadier Molina and Adam Wainwright. They did lose Brad Miller, so I'm giving the Cardinals a B plus because that Arenado move was so tremendous, especially being able to keep those big-time prospects and have some of the money taken off of Arenado's contract. The Miami Marlins, they brought in Anthony Bass, Dylan Floro, Adam Duvall, and Gio Gonzalez. The Marlins were able to make the playoffs last year. Uh, their team is a little better, but these guys aren't amazing players. Adam Duvall is a pretty good player, so I'm going to give them a D plus. Up next, the Washington Nationals. They made the trade for Josh Bell. They brought in Kyle Schwarber. They re-signed Ryan Zimmerman. They signed Brad Hand. Brought in John Lester, Alex Avila, and Jeremy Jeffries on a minor league contract. So I'm going to give the Washington Nationals a B plus. That was a very good offseason for them. Philadelphia Phillies. They made the Jose Alvarado trade. They re-signed JT Real Muto. Re-signed Didi Gregorius. Brought in Matt Moore and Chase Anderson also added Brad Miller, Tony Watson, Brandon Kistler, Archie Bradley, and others. The Phillies made a lot of nice under-the-radar moves, and I'm going to give them a B. Up next, the Atlanta Braves. They start off the offseason by signing Drew Smiley and Charlie Morton. They brought back Marcel Lazuna and claimed Guillermo Heredia from the Mets, and I'm going to give the Braves a B plus because they did lose Mark Melanson and Darren O'Day, and as of right now, Shane Green is still on sign. So I do have a little bit of concern with that Braves bullpen. Yes, they do have Will Smith, but I feel like they're going to need a little more of that. It's hard to replace three relievers. And lastly, the New York Mets. They had Marcus Stroman accept the qualifying offer, signed Trevor May for the bullpen, signed James McCann to be their new catcher, made the big-time trade for Francisco Lindor and Carlos Carrasco, signed Aaron Loop, signed Jonathan VR, Kevin Pillar, Taiwan Walker. Mets made a ton of moves this offseason. Based on the moves the Mets made, I would give them an A-. However, 
The Seth Lugo injury and the Mets not making any moves following that injury drops them down to a B plus because I think the bullpen is going to be the make or break for this team. And I do not feel very confident right now after the first few spring training games. That is subject to change, but as of right now, I don't have a lot of confidence in the Mets bullpen, and that's why they're going to finish the offseason at a B plus. That's the offseason grades for every LB team. So I hope you guys like this video. Again, leave a like and comment down below. What are some of the grades you have for the offseason and what signings did you like throughout baseball? The next video will be Sunday, a live stream following the Mets spring training game. And until the next one, be safe, be smart, be healthy, and let's go Mets, sign Shane Green.